welcome to the first ever Air Essential Show. Um, today, I have hosted with me Brian Northern, who trains. If you need basketball training, go to this guy. He'll get your game right. I've seen him transform so many players in the area, just get better over one summer with him. And we have high school basketball phenom, Alex Hayes. Eight points a game. Best screen setter <laughs> in the Indiana State history. Uh, he's actually on John Harrell's records. If you go, like, most screen set in a game. He just loves high school basketball. So today, we're just going to go over 4 through 1A. We are covering the Seymour sectional, the Charlestown sectional, the Southwestern Hanover sectional, and the Westwash sectional. So those are the games that we'll actually have shooters at covering. So we want to talk about players, coaches, venues, um, records, um, just really how players are doing this year, who we think is going to win. Um, but without, you know, we have to talk about some of the players and the girls side real quick before we go we got to give them a shout out we have Corden locally and Lanesville and really uh, Beffer North Lawrence that are all local shout out to you guys congrats um, we'll be there filming for you Saturday good luck to all those players have you seen any of the girls play I know you I saw Beffer it's the best team girls in gender regard uh, irrelevant of gender of gender Beffer is the best team in the area girls basketball that's a show it's worth going to watch and you've trained some of the Lanesville girls Actually, I have not had any of those. Okay. Guys. The uh, Brumley and the Crozier girl, I've never worked with them. Okay. Yeah. Wayne's well, amazing, though. At the 1A label, I don't I don't see anybody beating them Saturday. Uh, and this charge, so. Yeah. They have seven players that come out and score. I remember I, we, we filmed last weekend at New Albany. Two players came off the bench. She scored 12 straight. Like, <laughs> who's going to beat that as your sixth man? Have it or six well, if you have a Hinton in your coaching box, you probably have an advantage anyway. So, you know, that helps. So, it'll be fun. Good luck, girls. But now we're going to get into the guys sectionals this is my favorite time of the year this is christmas eve week for me just watching all the picks we had the selection show um i don't think there's really any pick that went like bad like all the all the like um what word am i looking for brackets have yeah good sides there's some people that got a great draw yeah but in far in my opinion it was it was going to be fun so first off talk about jeff a little bit you are a graduate of jeff you played there what do you see this year? You've seen him a couple times. You trained some of their players. I'm a big Sharon Wilkerson fan. I love the fact that he went out and played Cathedral first game of the season. Yeah. He didn't say, hey, this is my first game. Let me put a, a team on here that I can win, make the crowd, you know, uh, get behind me. And I was at that game. They lost by 50. You know, Xavier Booker going to Michigan State, probably this year's Mr. Basketball. They have a, a core group of four sophomores who have a chance to be really good. And they've gotten better throughout the year. And he went out and put together a schedule. He played some teams from Louisville. He played some big dogs from Indianapolis. And although their record doesn't tell the whole story, I like this group. Have you seen him play, Alex? Yeah. Okay. I've not got you. They statistically, they start four sophomores, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Sean Boyd, P.J. Douglas, um, Trey Michael Cooper, and Trey Singleton. As starting those young guys, they shoot almost 40% from the three-point line. And they shoot a lot of threes. Mm -hmm. I know Sean... At the Providence game, hit five threes that I went to. Of course, they end up losing that game, but they're a good team. Um, we saw them. We went to Jeff versus Cathedral, Jeff versus New Albany, and Jeff versus Providence for Aaron and filmed those guys. They're gritty, um, and I think in March, we, we were talking earlier, seniors win most of the time, but I wouldn't count Jeff out no, as, as— Well, they just beat Jennings County. That's true. There goes to their second team there, Jennings right. County. I personally have not seen them play all year. You both have, so why don't you guys talk about them a little bit? Well, Jennings County just chucks it from anywhere on the court. And, I mean, I think their record speaks for themselves that their ability to hit threes like you were, we were talking about before we started rolling is they were down by, I think it's 20, 21 points and got back in within a quarter just because of their ability to shoot. So I think that that sectional is definitely going to be favored towards Jennings County just based on the, the record and statistics, but uh, I wouldn't count Jeff out. Jennings is still the favorite. Um, I think Jeff playing at home gave them uh, an advantage, and Jennings shot very poorly. Um, Jeff played a zone. Uh, Jennings got off to a cold start, and then when they got going again, if they had not built such a large deficit, I think they could have beat Jeff. But I think Jennings is still the team to beat. They're a high school version of like a Golden State Warriors. They got four to five guys on the floor who will shoot it, and they'll shoot it with rage. Yep. And a lot of times when they're on, they'll beat you. And we're lucky enough in the state of Indiana to have something like John Harrell. Um, Alex and I were texting earlier today, so he put out what, you know, his Sagarin rating is in that, your record, the strength to schedule, all that stuff is piled into what he thinks is the sectional favorite. And in that 4A, he has, Jennings County has a 41.78% chance to win that sectional. So you're talking almost 50% chance off numbers alone that this team wins. But in a historic venue like Seymour, you never know what's going to happen because, right. you know, 
Uh, who's waiting on the other side of that game? Is Jeff got the bias with Beffert North Lawrence and New Orleans? Um, well, Beffert North Lawrence plays Jennings County the first game. Jeff got the buy. I didn't see Beffert at all this year. Um, of course, the girls team gets a lot of press. Um, I'm not sure about the I, guys team. I watched their game against New Albany. They got some pieces. Okay, yeah, they got some pieces. I mean, New Albany's down this year, but the New Albany still gave a, a fight. But there's Beffert is never terrible. I mean, it's Beffert. They're always a four A. They're yeah. yeah, they're going to be solid. So speaking of New Albany, um, we filmed New Albany a lot, and we flew, filmed Floyd Central a lot. I think it's funny that somehow every couple of years the draw is always putting Floyd and New Albany playing each other in that mm-hmm. first round. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I don't think either team is superior. Is that fair to say? Have you? I think I give the edge to New Albany for the simple fact that they've had a better regular season, not by much. I mean, both teams are under 500 this year. But I think New Albany just seems a little bit more cohesive this year. Yeah. I would give them an edge. Coach Shannon's played in his last year. I would hope the, the guys play for him. Um, fun, interesting fact. I was told since Romeo and Sean East left, New Albany hasn't won a sectional game. Not a sectional, wow. but a sectional game. Wow. So it's been a few years, guys. We'll see. And real quick before Alex, he has an interesting stat too. In March, every team's got one team's got to go home. So please don't get on the comments and, you know, we're not – taking shots at any personal player or team. One team's got to go home, right? It's win or go home, and we're just saying who we think's going to win. Nothing personal. I love every player in Southern Indiana. Just before I want to put a public service announcement on that one, we love every player, all right? You don't go – don't let uh, – you don't go to Bryant because, oh, he said I'm going to lose first round. They'll make you better so you don't go home first round unless, next year. So we love all of you. But Alex has – what were you telling me earlier about Jim Shannon? No. Um, so on Harold, like you mentioned, we got an embarrassment of riches when it comes to statistics in the state of Indiana basketball. And you can go back 30 years if you want and research past records and everything. But one of the most telling stats that I saw from a dominance for a program is Jim Shannon has been at New Albany for 26 years. And in those 26 years, New Albany has a 75% winning percentage, which puts them at fifth in the state amongst all classes. At a 4A level, that's just absolutely unparalleled. So... While I know they've had a down year this year, and this is his last season, he's just an absolutely unbelievable coach. And about 10 years ago, I got to go to a um, coaching clinic with actually with then Xavier coach, Coach Mack, with uh, Coach Kerberg, and listen to him. He was one of the keynote speakers, and I, I could have sat there for, for five hours and just listened to him talk about basketball. It was yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and I will say, um, like you said, since last year, he's been a so good to that community. We He's filmed, a class act. We filmed for uh, Matt Dennison's program this year yeah. for the All-Star game. He's there at every game, high five and every New Albany player. He coached the New Albany All-Star team for fourth graders. He really cares about that community, and it yeah. shows with how they treat him back. And no, His ability to stay involved with the feeder program, whether you're in the third or fourth grade, he's present. Um, so I think the success of New Albany over the last 10, 20 years um, has been predicated on you know, we're at the top. And Coach Shannon, is, like I said, he's been a class act. He's been involved in the feeder. And they're they're going to bounce back. I think uh, in the future, he has set them up for success. They have a great feeder program, probably the best in this area. I don't think there's a better feeder program. And Scribner and Hazelwood dominate year in and year out. Yeah. They're phenomenal. Well, so we said at 4A, James County, 41%. Jeff coming in at, with a young team at 22%. Jenning County, is that a 3 0 vote? Do we think they're going to win that sectional? Just would give him a fist fight, but I still take Jennings County. I would I think I think Jennings is gonna come out on top on this one. So we got the final game would be, in your opinion, your opinion would be New Albany, Jennings County. Yeah, I'll take yeah, I'll take, take New Floyd. Floyd. You can take Floyd. No, I'll take New Albany. This you, is Coach Shane some Floyd year. players, right? I do. I have I no, that's actually some guys I'm familiar with. Um Caleb Washington, um Tevi Ali, you Sam Higgins. Those are some guys. Is he healthy right now? Washington's good. He, he's, he's healthy, but he's not 100%. Okay. You know, he's still not in a groove. He's still not fully in, in shape yet, but he's going to get there. I think Floyd, in a year or two, if all those pieces are still there, they're going to make a run again. And we have to understand, this is the first time. So I'm looking right now. Floyd is 6-15. and 15. If you guys go back and look, Jake Hybrider, of that class, that great senior class two years ago, not there's not one senior in this area having a better year than, than Jake. It's true. You had Trey Kaufman at Purdue, who's probably around three, four points per game. Jake might be Air Force's best player. Yeah. And he has thrived um, at the D1 level. They had Kobe Barnes, who's an Indiana All-Star. He's playing D1. So we've seen this 
I mean, if it wasn't for Romeo, Floyd probably would have made a state run once or twice. So it's they've been really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. And now this six and fifteen, it's it's not a typical Floyd team, but they're gonna get back there. And I don't think this is their year right now. I think with the new coach and some younger players, uh, they got a lot to figure out. But I'm still gonna go with with Jennings and probably New Albany, I guess, in that championship game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up, we are heading to Charlestown for the three A um, sectional. Last year was hosted at Salem. I am thankful that it's Charlestown because we made that Salem drive back and forth all week. But honestly, Seymour historic venue, Charlestown's nice as Gem in Indiana, in my opinion. Oh, I agree. I mean, I don't. It's a college level audit. It's college level. They added the two LED boards this year. I don't know if you've been back. Mm-hmm. You know, in the middle, they have the announcers. They're playing little. Uh, as soon as you hit a free throw, like the. Ching. I mean, they're like they're on it this year. Uh, they're doing a great job over there. So, the only time I ever saw that gym full was when Romeo went there his senior year. Um, I haven't seen it full since, but it it could add the possibility with the teams that are playing um, this year and that. So in the 3A Charlestown section, we have Scottsburg, Gordon, Silver Creek, North Harrison, Charlestown, Salem, and Madison. Um, top two are, are heavy hitters. Um, and then, like I said, with the percentage rankings down here, Salem and Madison have less than a point percentage to win that sectional. But never count anybody out. Um I love talking about like the players in it, and you have literally just the personal connection with those guys. You train a lot of Scottsburg guys. I've seen some Silver Creek guys with you. I've seen Charlestown guys with you. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on the players in this 3A sectional? Um, the favorite is Scottsburg. I think top to bottom, they have the most talent. They have size with Wyatt Zellers. They got uh, the Miller kid. They got Clancy. They got some other pieces that I think make them the team to beat. I think Corden is right behind them. Um, I haven't really looked at that bracket or dissected it. Could Corden and Scottsburg play in the championship game, or are they on the same side of the bracket? No, they're on opposite sides. Yeah, they're on opposite sides. And I think those from top to bottom, from whether it be record or not, I know that doesn't always tell the whole story. I think those are just top to bottom, the two most talented or two best teams. They got guard play, they got size, they got shooting, they got rebounding. Um, And I also think whoever wins that sectional would also have a chance in the regional. I think you're looking at teams that are built to make a run. And last night, Scottsburg did take a tough loss to Jennings County. Jennings County shot well. Um, it was low scoring too, right? 50. Super low scoring. It's something, yeah. Well, for them, it's low scoring. Right, for those two programs, yeah. It's um, not a bad loss, though. It's not a bad loss. Not a bad loss. Um, but they're coming off a good win against Silver Creek. I think it was like the first time since 2007 they'd ever beat Silver Creek at Silver Creek. Um, they shot really well that night. Um, Cody Clancy, I think, is one of the best players in the area, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Just the way he is a floor general. He looks at the floor. He tells everybody what to do. He can shoot it. He can drive. Yeah. And you add in Jack Wyatt, like all those players you're talking about. They, you know, that's their reason that there's 65 percent chance to win this. Actually. Clancy's like a senior man. He's a little. He's a little more wise beyond his year. He, he doesn't play like a junior. He well, looks like a senior. He got girl. thrown to the Wolves this freshman year. He did. I mean, you're playing. You know, regardless of it. And you had Hayden. Um, what was Hayden's name? Cutter. You had Cutter in there with a great player. So he's playing with those. You know senior guys and the upperclassmen and he got thrown to the wolves and uh silver creek ran that sectional for what how many are you four in a, they have four in a row yeah. four in a row yeah they ran that sectional for that so without been, covid they probably get three rings yeah yeah so you have a player like that so you know jack chance ran for madison but you have wyatt and um cody who had to play against those top players uh like you talked trey coffin and uh cooper jacoby they've been playing against those guys oh they're seasoned yeah. they're very so, seasoned guys but Corden has some some un- phenomenal wins this year. Their coach is doing a great job. Lucas Fessel is unreal um, as a point guard. They also have um, – Is it Tyler Fessel, the point guard? Tyler Fessel, sorry. No. That's my bad. Tyler Fessel, Anthony Martin, Jalen Fowler are all playing really well together. The one time that we got to go watch them play this year was Rock Creek, and they got a win at Rock Creek. Um, they had a shaky first half, but coach pulled them together, and, and if they get rolling, I mean – they're, they're backcourts, the real deal. I like, uh, for the 3A level, that's a really, really good backcourt. Um, I, I'm kind of drawing blank on their bigs and what they have inside. I want to know, what, can they keep a team like Scottsburg out of the paint? Can they yeah. get those rebounds? Yeah, their big man's like 6'5 and averaging 14. So, I mean, 14 points a game. He can, They have all the pieces. They have the pieces. I'd love to see that championship game. Another team that has had up and down year, but I think they're young, but could be a Charlestown playing at home. Last night they kept draw they kept Southwestern Hanover. Yeah, you know, they had the lead till the fourth quarter, and then Southwestern Hanover ended up winning. 
But I think that team could do some damage at home. Do you think they're the third best team in that sectional? Um, it depends. Silver Creek. I think Silver Creek's better. Though. Silver Creek could be. North Harrison technically is you know, statistically, but I'm pretty sure the Caleb kid is not playing. So one of their leading scorers is out with a broken ankle. He broke it at Clarksville, which I hate that for him. He's a um, NAI football commit, but he was North Harrison kid. Yeah, the Caleb Clemens kid. It's hard to ever. I mean, Lou Lafay, he can he can just defensively dos, you know put a defensive game together where they're in every game. Um, I don't know if they have the scoring power to kind of get there. You lose a guy like Logan McIntyre, who was a D1 guy. Um, I would like to think that North Harrison can win a game, uh, obviously as long as they're not playing Corden or – North Harrison did beat uh, Scottsburg in the regular season too. They came out and shot lights out. For me, that's a credit to the coaching, man. I, I think this is not one of the better teams they've had in years. They've lost LT Hat and they've lost Logan McIntyre. I mean – I really feel right now you're just seeing how good of a coach he is. So Lou Lafay, I whenever he was at Providence, I used to play against him and he will make you hate the game of basketball. Yeah. He will he will literally make you hate playing basketball because his teams are going to grab you and push you and shove you. And they're not playing take dirty. Charges. They're just take, charges. take charges. You can't move the ball. He's not gonna let you move the ball off the wings. It's just impossible to move the ball. And especially in the sectional environments, whenever you get teams who may tighten up a little bit. North Harrison has a puncher's chance in my opinion. Once again, had it not been for Cooper Jacoby and, and Trey Kaufman ran and those guys and even my son Brandon Northern, North Harrison would have made some runs. Probably they were good last year, man. That sectional was so fun to cover. Well, they were good two years ago when LT Hatton was a senior. That that year, they could have made a run. Yeah. So, uh, my opinion, of course, I love the guys over at Scottsburg. Um, they're my sectional favorite this year. Um, Mine as well. Coming out of there. So, that first game, looking here, is North Harrison Corden. Then you got Madison, Scottsburg, and Charleston and Silver Creek. That's I mean, this is a section that has seven teams, so there's a lot more games. And you, They have that Wednesday night game. Yeah, the Wednesday yeah. night game. Yeah. So, you know, you're coming to play one game instead of the back-to-back on the Tuesday night. I think it could be a fun sectional. I really do. I don't – I mean, Scottsburg is a favorite, but you know how it is in March. Any nights North Harrison. But don't count on Coach Hoffman either at Silver Creek. I mean, they just proved that they can beat anybody. So, I know they've had a bit of an up-and-down year this year, but – I don't know. I, I still think Scottsburg the favorite. But. I agree with you. They have a nice one against Providence. If they if they can duplicate that, they'd have to do that two or three nights in a row. Though. I agree. That's to be the underdog in in mo- most of these games. Yeah. yeah. So we'll and see. in that section, like we talked about, that is everybody's Super Bowl. They like you said, they ran that sectional for four years. Well, everyone wants to beat. Everybody Super wants to beat them. Yeah. So that'll be a fun one. Super intrigued to see by that. Um, well, of course, we'll have all the highlights up the night of the games, and I'll uh, we'll keep everybody up to date with that. So that's gonna be a fun one. Well, now, I personally think that this could be the best sectional in the state. I know there's really good ones. You know, you talk about, like, Ben Davis and all them. Like, they're probably front runners. But as far as teams... Well, let's say 2A. This is the best 2A section. 100%. In the state. And I will say, you know, we're talking about Southern Indiana and teams that era is going to be covering. I think Southern Indiana could go head-to-head with any other sectional. As far as 1 through 4A, there's some great teams. There's some great matchups, some great gyms. Maybe I'm just... You know, bias because I'm down here. But. 4A, no. I think that what we've seen over the years is obviously with Creek and North Harrison being top 10 teams, that was a great sectional. You could put that against any sectional. 4A, though, I mean, you're talking, you got Carmel and Ben Davis and uh, Pike and all those different Cathedrals, teams. Fishers, all those guys. Yeah, there. I mean, you had Lawrence North and then Lawrence Central in the same sectional. It's just hard to compete with that. But I think 1, 2, 3A, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. So this one is probably in the Southern Indian the most well known because Providence and Borden or board and Brownstown are going to be playing each other yeah. at some point in the sectional, and it's going to be fun. Um, of course, with Brownstown, you have Jack Benner. Um, they got some transfers, some pieces. Providence uh, okay. may be the best defense team in 2A. Yeah. I mean, I don't I, seen I think that Ryan Miller, and I'm going to say this, and I hope I don't, I don't step on too many toes, but I'm gonna say, I think he's as good or better than any coach in the state. He won a state title last year, and there wasn't there isn't one kid in that team from last year that's going to play D1 or even D2. They beat a team that had a Connor Segan, who's at Wisconsin, who has started some this year. Yeah. So they beat a team with a kid who was going to the Big Ten and held him to, what, eight, ten points? And I think that just shows you how good of a coach Ron Miller is. I mean, he is the real deal. He has made them a defensive-minded, grinded-out team, and he gets the most out of his players. So I, I think you can put him up against anybody, one through 4A, from here to Indianapolis or above as in terms of just really good high school coaches. Well, it really is a contrast in styles because you have Benter over at Brownstown 
who had 37 last night. I mean, they, their whole team flows through him, which if I had that kid on my team, I'd give him the ball too. But then you have Providence, who I don't know that they have anybody averaging over maybe 12, 13 points a game. Somebody correct me on that if I'm wrong, but it's just completely different styles. Defensive, team-oriented, and neither is right or wrong. It's just going to be interesting to see what happens next week. I will say, I was I literally just watched the Eastern Peak and Brownstown game, which is the first game matchup in that sectional. Yeah. Jack was very, um, I don't know, like I don't know, he just hit the brakes a lot. He could have taken his shots, but I feel like he's mature in his brain that knows every team in that sectional is going to stop me. He fed the ball to his sophomores. Yeah. And to his other shooters, and if he does, if you're going to try to stop Jack, Chase Coomer last he had four threes that night. Colby Hall hit two threes. Plus he was inside. Not to mention that Parker kid hit 13 threes in a single game this year. I mean, it's just just in case the people who are listening or watching don't really have a good background on Brownstown or Jack Benner. Jack Benner's dad's the head coach. He is a, an elite high school basketball coach. Yes, he is. So when I said Ryan Miller is one of the best coaches, I don't want to you know step on his toes because he's the real deal. But Jack Benner is going to be next year's Mr. Basketball. He's going to be 2024 Mr. Basketball. He's going to Purdue, and you got to thank Purdue. You really think that over Bedunga? Um, yeah, because I think in terms of body of works, just because he might be nationally ranked higher doesn't mean that he has to be. C.J. Gunn was nationally ranked higher than Braden Smith, and Braden Smith got it. Yeah. I think we've seen from the body of works of Jack Benner, he's had a better four years. Well, I mean, three years. But I think that, yeah, I think he will be next year's Mr. Basketball. I mean, he's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Well, it's a powerful thing whenever you have a player in your roster who could, if he wanted to, could go out and score 40 points a night, but chooses not to because he wants, like you said, get the other guys involved because he understands whenever he gets into sectional week and beyond, it takes five guys. He's still getting the 30. Oh, yeah, right, he, right. He turn it up and get 40, That's but he's right. still getting I think in New Orleans last night at 36. 37. And he's, he did it last year as a sophomore. I mean, he would just hit people for 30, 35 on the road. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Brownstown. Like I said, they had Chase um, Hall or uh, Chase Coomer, Colby Hall come in from Scottsburg. Unreal additions to that team. They all came around him, and they I, I don't know. I don't see anybody beating that team. But the one, state champion could come out of that section. I, I agree. believe that Providence could make another run, but I think that Brownstown has everything to win it two years in a row. They could make two two runs in a row. I will say that. Um, it would be a Friday night game, and then, you know, not overlooking everybody else because they're that's not a first round matchup. But everybody else, Clarksville plays Providence, Brown Towns plays Easton, Eastern. I'm taking Providence. I'm taking Brownstown. That game is going to be crazy. That gym is going to be insane. You know what's interesting to think about? He committed to Purdue late sophomore, beginning of his junior year. Can you imagine if he had left his recruiting open and IU was involved and Purdue and all these other high major schools, imagine the attendance. Because, you know, although Purdue is Purdue, they're a top five team in the country, top ten. They've been number one throughout a lot of this year. Yeah. Imagine if he had left that recruiting process open. All the Indiana fans. All the Indiana fans, all the people. Would, they, I think they would have sold out. You would have seen a little bit more mass media attention to him. I think him committing early kind of – because, you know, Purdue, there's not a ton of Purdue fans in southern Indiana. But I think if he had left that recruiting, uh, that recruiting open – we could have seen even a little bit more media attention. Now, I think yeah. it's actually kind of calmed down since he committed. So well, the frenzy would have been, I don't know, anything will ever rival what was around Romeo, but it would have probably been the same discussion. It, it I wouldn't say same discussion. I, I think it would have been, you know, it's interesting because when Trey Kaufman ran, he had a Louisville offer in North Carolina, and we still didn't sell out games. I went to every Silver Creek game, and it was weird, and I don't know if it was the COVID effect, but we would be in the gym and it'd be 1,000 seats empty, and I thought, why are more people showing up? But I think Jack Benner coming from such a small town yeah. um, and whatnot. And people know his dad. People know his dad. I think it could have been crazy. I think it would have been a hard ticket to get. He broke the backboard. The Jack Benner legend is kind of growing. I mean, And, and I will say, we went the other night speaking game, sold out crowd. The environment, that was my first time ever being at a basketball game. The environment that they put on there, it was, I, I've never been in a better high school environment. They have, you know, players running around or like students running up top with flags the band's playing that theme song. Everybody's chanting. It, it, it was unreal. It was a sold-out crowd, people standing all around top. So that's a smaller gym than Southwestern Hanover, but he is selling out crowds. Um, I know every every week that they play, including like the Scottsburg game and stuff like that, the athletic department puts out, hey, the game's sold out tonight. Please don't come and try to buy tickets. Like You're not going to get them. Yeah, and so, they're coming to see Jack. I mean, it, I mean, it's a great team, but Jack's 
making that draw. Yeah. And the other side of the bracket, which when we talked about picks earlier, I think, and I texted some of the Southwestern Hanover players, I think out of one through four A that we're covering, Southwestern Hanover got the best draw with the winner of Hinderville, Austin. Then they play them, and then they're in the championship game. I mean, I don't know if you've seen Southwestern Hanover all this year. I've seen them four times. I've seen them a couple. They got Jamison Lewis, who's a great player. They have Peyton Gwynn, Peyton Gwen, Clown. Gwynn is Gwen a special is kid. Special. He, at the Madison game, pulls up from five feet beyond the arc, swishes a three to go into overtime. Yeah. He's clutch. He's been there. He can, I mean, not that dunking means anything. He can go down. He can slam it. I mean, Is this team as good as the team they had a few years back with Mefford and um, some of those guys? The Mefford boys. and I think so. And wow. because their offense is so simple. I mean, I've watched them a couple of times, and but you can't really defend it because they have the guards that can take you off the dribble. But they are pure driving kick. And, and Gwen is, like we said, a special kid. But, I mean, they'll hit 15 threes on you in a game. And that's fine. And it's hard to beat. And that's why I'm... And they upset Brownstown. Brownstown. That's, that's what I'm about to say is I really think if anybody has a puncher's chance, and Henryville's had a fantastic year, I just don't think that they have the horses to keep up. If anybody's going to knock them off, it's going to be a hot Southwestern team. You even said earlier, I don't know if you want me to say it out loud. You can. That's fine. No, you picked Southwestern Hanover for this section. And nobody's oh, agreeing. Wow. With that. Yep. Wow. I just, it's a gut feeling for me. I could be completely off, and obviously that doesn't. I think it makes for a good conversation because if we just keep picking the favorites, it gets boring. And I think that you're, you know, I see they're 19 and three, and I like that team they had three or four years ago, probably the best one I had seen in years. And if you say this team is better than that, the Hanover Southwestern team from uh, 2020, 2019 then this is probably a really special team. And shout out to Henryville, man. 15 and 6. Yeah, that's Jared Hill over there. They don't get this any ink. Good, but they won the conference. Jared Hill does a great job. He does. And he's been taking heat from its community. I mean, they cannot stand him on Facebook. And he just goes and he still loves those players. I, I Go for Look up the Henryville Community News. And I don't know if the guy that runs is going to be on here. Please be on here. <laughs> they give him so much crap for having a winning season. I mean, Henryville doesn't have the tenter. They don't yeah. have a benter, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this much. I, I, I hate it for any high school coach because you don't make that much money. That's right. Your job is a full-time, all-year-round job of helping kids and open gyms and conditionings and games. And then you got to get emails and texts and parents this and parents that and play my kid more. Why isn't my kid starting? And when these uh, coaches are out here really, really trying to help kids or help their community, it's it's tough, man. And I – Obviously, as a trainer and a former coach, um, I always tend to lean and side towards the coaches. So I just know it's tough. But I mean, fifteen and six, um, he's this is a really, really good year for them, and he's had some good teams in the past. And this looks like this might be one of his better teams he's had in three, four, five years. It is. And I listened to Matt Dennison's show, which I really liked. You know, he had he had Benner on, Jim Shannon, uh, Coach Hayden Casey, all these players. So they're talking. Don Nash was on there, and his theology for this year is. He's not even looking sections right now. He has two games. I think they play a big game Friday night. Uh, yeah, they do. Who, do they play Austin? I forget who they have. They might play Austin right before they play Austin. I'm not sure. Whoever it is, they play Friday night. He said, we're going to scout them. Then we'll take two days and we'll take Austin. Once we, you know, whatever happens Austin, if we're fortunate enough to win, then we'll go to the next game. And he said, that's what's working for him right now. So he's literally taking it game by game. He's got players um, that Gian, uh, Giannis on his team, 6-7, can play around the rim. He can block shots. He can score. Um, well, he's cursed by geography too. I mean, Providence. We just spent 15 minutes talking about all these great teams in the same sectional. Henryville. We don't know next week what happens. I mean, they got some really, really talented teams, but these guys have a chance. Can we agree to win that sectional? You have to either be Brownstown or Providence. Yeah. Yes. At the last month, let's say you have five games left. Very, very. Although you're scouting for maybe a Clarksville or Austin. I would spend at least 30 minutes a day addressing Brown's honor yeah. evidence. Yeah. And I do want to say, we talked about two or this two-day session the whole time um, without even mentioning Pekin. I really like Pekin's team. They lost their coach this year. A new guy steps up. They have Jake Cherry, 6'11", great around the rim. Um, they have uh, Cody Bannett on a guard. Uh, number 25, his name's escaping me. After losing a score like Kate Jones last year, they've come in and they've won games consistently. You have a 6'11 guy. Uh, it's never, I mean, I don't. Uh, Jacob, you know, and he, maybe before COVID, maybe before Transfer Portal, he's a D1, small, small D1, D2 guy. Um, you just can't teach 6'10", 6'11". He's getting better. He's getting more athletic. Like you said, they lost a 27-point-a-game score in the Jones kid. 
and now it looks like they're 15 and six, uh, five and two in their class, and two and two in, against sectional opponents. I actually think that what I'm gonna uh, mirror what you said earlier and piggyback on that. This is the best sectional in 2A in yeah. the state. I can't think of a better sectional from the bottom. I and you know I feel bad because I don't want these guys watching this and be like, you didn't say anything. Clarksville could come in and shoot lights out. Yeah. I've watched them do it all year. I've watched them come in. Morgan Caps had like 17 assists in a game, and Jacob Stewart and Landon shot lights out. Jacob can hit. I mean, you we you know you've played in it before in the high school level. You've watched it for years. I don't know. I don't think there's going to be many blowouts in a lot of these games. There will be some, but can't teams get hot in March. I mean, I I think these te- these two teams are too good for an upset. I think I think when you look at a Brownstown or a Providence, if you you couldn't win this sectional without beating one of them, one of them will be in, in the finals. So I think ultimately, whether it be Hanover, uh, whether it be a Clarksville or someone, could you see one upset? But I highly doubt you you could. And I and I agree. But I just want to make sure I shout out those guys right. because they've had an unreal year. Well, just and, it's, it's a testament to the strength of and the resiliency of that sectional that Eastern's fifteen and six and they hardly get any attention. I mean, that just tells you how how tough the top is. And you know, Coach Kyle Hankins at Clarksville can coach. The dude's coached college his whole life and um, at every level, and he's lost some players. And I think I would be interested to see with a with you know a stack squad or a little bit more talent, how well he does. Because yep. the guy's coached at every level in college. Yep. And he was a uh, Indiana All-Star, played Division One. He knows basketball. Yep. I really like this sectional. Um, I wish I was the one filming it, but we're going to have a shooter there. Every game is going to be fun. It's going to be packed. Southwestern Hanover has an amazing gym. They do. Um, they just made some renovations, too. It's, right? Oh, my gosh. It's yeah. so pretty. It's sitting on both sides. Yeah. Uh, or on both ends, both ends of the student sections right behind the I haven't seen I used to drive out there. I used to get up at 5 a.m. and train Foster Mefford, and I would drive out there, and we, I would get there right at 6, and me and him would do an hour, hour and a half workout. And it's been a couple of years, so I haven't seen the renovations. But um, I tell you what, I'll probably make it out there for one of those games. Especially. That Friday night, you should. Yeah. I think you should. Maybe. Okay, so take Jack Benner out of it. This is a hot seat question. Who's the best player in this sectional? It's not fair for me to say because I haven't seen Hanover Southwest in an actual game, you know, and I've looked at stats. Um, I don't know. I like the Noah Lovins kid from Providence. Hanover Southwestern has some pieces. Casey Jake Kalen. Chair. Yeah. Um, I actually think Noah's one-on-one is their strongest player. Yeah. Uh, I think he's a guy who you can put the ball in his hands, and he's their most experienced, strongest player. And you talk about Ryan Miller. The fact that you have somebody like Noah, and I love Noah, and I would say this to his face, who came from Kentucky ball, over, which is a completely different game. It's a completely different style. He, Coach Miller, m- not made him, but got him to buy into the way that they play. Yeah, that's a that's also a testament to Noah that he's coachable. Yes. So the fact that those guys like that can come over, and we you know we were talking about earlier, like system players. Yeah. That's, I think Ryan Miller's team is like a small Purdue. They're all system mm-hmm. players. They know it. You might not get as much playing time, but when you go in, you're going to dive on the ball, and you're going to set a screen, and you're going to take a charge. You might get three minutes. And you're going to get praised just as if somebody came off the bench with 20. Well, those adjustments are made in practice. Yeah. The competitiveness of practice makes those guys want to do that to get on four. Because if you don't. And Providence brings 9,000 people to every game. That does help. That does help. That does help. All right. Well, that wraps up the 2A. We are so excited to film that. That was going to be fun. Um, Of course, we'll be there. We'll post stats. Hopefully, Jack Benner breaks another backboard. (laughs) That would be fun for me. They had two backboards shattered at Brownstone. Yes, Adam Stahl broke. Jack Benner, please do not break a backboard (laughs) because now they're going to delay the game and then we got to drive all the way back out there. Thousands of people just dunk really hard and shake their backboard, but don't don't break it. I will say the only backboard they've broken are at Brownstown, so maybe something shady is going on there. (laughs) Well, here we are at the 1A West Wash level. Um, Like I said, I still am on staff at a 1A school in the area. So I'm not going to talk much at all in this one. I'm going to leave it to these guys. He's trained players at the 1A level. He graduated from one of these schools, played against them. I mean, he is probably the biggest Christian Academy fan other than Larry Staggers alive. I'll take Larry. I'll, I'll fight Larry for this. All right, well, we'll fight that. So this one, we have um, Christian Academy, West Wash, Borden, South Central, Rock Creek, Lanesville. Hosted at West Wash. It changed from Borden. Last year to West Wash, uh, this sectional lost New Wash and gained West Wash in. So, boys, have at this 1A section. I'm excited to listen. Ahead. I'll let you start. Well, first of all, um, I think when you look at a Doc Nash, he's won a state title. He has been doing this through and through. He's kind of like the Ryan Miller's version of 1A. I mean, the dude just figures out how to get it done. He has a system. All the players learn to play in that system. 
I would like to think that he's always going to have a chance in every section. I don't care if he has a young team or only one senior or if he doesn't have anyone over six foot. He just finds a way to be there. So I think uh, Borden is going to be a team in this sectional to beat. Um, I look at Christian Academy. I think they might have the best player in the sexual sectional in uh, Joshua Renfro, at least the best shooter. Um, I like South Central. This is one of the better teams they've had. And I haven't seen them play, but I've followed them and heard they're very competitive. And then, you know, Rock Creek's always an X factor because they're they're the biggest team. I mean, you don't have yes, a 6'10", 6'11 guy, and then you got the tree kid who's like 6'5", 240, uh, and Ladarius Wallace, an experienced senior. So I think you're looking at a four-team race, in my opinion. Um, you know, anyone has a puncher's chance, but for me, I think you're looking at four teams who legitimately have a chance to witness, and that's Borden, South Central, Christian Academy, and, and Rock Creek. And I, and I hate to say that to Lanesville, West Washington fans, if you're watching, but I really think those four teams are, are, are the teams who are really competing to win this section. Yeah, so for me, just going down the list here, we got some, honestly, for 1A, it's not always common to have this much talent at the top in 1A. We got the Hoffler kid at West Wash's 6'7 monster. South Central has a dual-headed uh, Thomas and Kuiper, both averaging over 16, 18 points a game. Obviously, CAI, I'm biased, but they've got Renfro, they've got Roy and Cook, and then Chasm Nash at Borden. I mean, you got a lot of talent at the top. Um, and I was I was joking. I've told a couple of people now that I was a little irritated to, at the beginning whenever I because I just moved to Charlestown, so the drive up to Borden would have been really easy for me. But now I have to drive out to Westwash. And after I thought about it for a second, making Doc Nash get on a bus in March is well worth the two hour round trip. <laughs> Getting that man out of Borden's gym, He's Doc Nash is incredible at Borden. He is. I mean, he, he is. was almost unbeatable at Borden. It almost wasn't fair because yeah. there were several times he did not have the best team, and he there was a couple of years Rock Creek had the best team in that section. And he, him or Langsville found The state that. team that he won with was... He had the Bean Brothers, but, I mean, think about that. He he has won a state title without a Division One or Division Two athlete. Um, he's the real deal. But having it at West Washington kind of neutralizes him a little bit, but I still think they're going to be one of the teams to be dope. If Coach Nash had a team of middle schoolers, I'd still be scared. <laughs> That's just the honest truth. I love Coach Nash. Him and I, he, he knows who I am. He's one of the few people who respected my game but <laughs> no um i think that this section is going to be a little bit wild um f the tuesday night atmosphere is going to be is going to be a lot of fun because you have borden and west washington going at it uh, west wash is at home and anytime you've got a six seven kid who can score and you're at home they're gonna give you a fist fight that's just my favorite first game is going to be christian academy and rock creek man that's good i feel like like, should there be dividers in the stands to separate the fans? Like, everyone's going to be on edge. We don't. Is there a little tension there, or is it just me? I feel like, I don't think they, they really like each other. And no, we get along great. <laughs> we get along great. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't know if, I, if I'm buying that right now, but I think that's going to be, like, packed house. Fans are going to be on edge. Every every call, you know, the re I almost feel sorry for the referee and crew. It is good. It's tough to officiate those guys. You got a shooter like Renfro. You got a big man like like Diaper and, and Treat. I think um, that's going to be a really, really intense game because if you remember what happened last time, Rock Creek had the game won, yep. and Christian Academy rallied back within the final minute with some really tough plays. Yeah. So I think this is a revenge game for them. Christian Academy is trying to find their way and prove, hey, we're here. We can win this sectional. And, you know, Chris Brown, he's still trying to, you know, finish his legacy of what he's going to do at Rock Creek. So I think that a lot of people feel like they have a lot to prove here. I think this is my most intriguing game one. I, I completely agree. And for the entire section, I think Rock Creek is the sleeper team. Mm -hmm. um, I, at 6-13, and 13, I know they haven't had a, a great record this year, but if you look at their schedule, and it he has, plays it's, good teams. it's he, been a war zone. Yeah, he plays big teams. He plays good teams. I was looking on Harold the other day. I think they had the 80, it was the third hardest in 1A and 86th overall hardest schedule in the state of Indiana. Chris does not dodge. Coach Chris Brown does no, he doesn't not dodge good competition. No, he doesn't he play Jeff. He'll play 4A. He'll go to Indy. He'll play Louisville. And his uh, ideology is, let me get you ready for March. So let's play the best teams now, and we'll be ready. So I don't look at that 6-13 and 13 and think, oh, they, they can't win this sectional. I think you got size. Right. You got a guard like Ladarius, who is – he's just a seasoned guard, man. He's fast. He can shoot. Um I think ultimately they, they have a chance. And that's why I think with the history there of the last game, this is going to be a really, really intriguing game one of this sectional. Yeah. And statistically, like I was saying this the whole time, John Harrell has, so they have South Central 29%, Christian Academy 26%, Rock Creek and Borden 16%. So you have a 10% margin in that top four that could go either way. That's, 
It's going to be fun. This is what makes it fun. When you know, hey, Borden's going to win this sectional, Jeff's going to win 4A, or Creek's going to win 3A, it's kind of like, eh. But when you think, okay, we can roll the dice, there's three or four teams that could easily win this sectional. Now it makes it really intriguing. Well, it's also going to be really interesting to see how the coaches come out, in my opinion, because in March, most coaches are going to try to slow it down, keep the game in the 30s or at the 1A level, 30s, 40s, or 50s as best as possible. But some of these coaches are going to, I think just based on the competitiveness of the sectional, let it fly. And will I, South Central do that, or will they play and slow down? I think they'll slow down. We're probably talking about CAI, to be honest with you, because CAI is more three-point oriented. I don't think it helps them to slow it down. I, I think they're a team if you're like eight at the in the middle or end of the third, you don't you don't take the air out of the ball. I think you keep going. You let guys get hot. You let guys keep playing. I don't think you want to play slow. I think uh, that their best style of basketball is play. They're definitely involved. sometimes you get tight, and you know I played the NCAA tournament, and, and Coach Patino was always saying, "Don't get tight, play your game. We're not coming here to stall, delay, or change what we've done that got us here." And I think that translates in high school basketball as well. You have to play your game. As soon as you get nervous or play tight, you're going home. That's right. I think or go home. Well, that's right. Borden with Chasm Nash, they let him shoot it from anywhere, and there's a good reason for that. I mean, I'm, and I'm, just just so he's watches. It's actually the case. Case, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I you're apologize. Good. You're good. I, it's yeah. spelled weird. Doc Regardless. Nash. I don't know what Doc was doing when he was spelling case. <laughs> we can get on to him. <laughs> the kick and flat out play is what it's all it is. This, is. this is a sectional where um, I don't have this exact stat. Uh, I guess I could look over here real quick. There's four or five players averaging close to 20 a game throughout the whole team. And you don't have that a lot. Very uncommon. At any level. I mean, one, two, three. I mean, they might have one guy. But some of these teams have two or three guys averaging almost 20. I love how excited everybody is for this sectional because the 1A, they're, they're, they sometimes become the redheaded stepbrother, stepsister because they get overlooked. Everyone wants to think 4A, big school, big school. There's a lot of good basketball going on here, and there's a lot of good players here. There's a lot of good coaches here. And I think, you know, get out of your shell a little bit. Instead of going to that Seymour sectional maybe or this, you know, the Charlestown sectional, come out to West Wash and check out some good 1A basketball. There's some – um a lot of these coaches have been coaching a while. There's a lot of history here. There's some rivalry games starting to build here. And I think that you're going to see, um, for me personally, outside of that Providence-Brownstown game, I think there's a couple games in this sectional that I would go buy a ticket for and pick over some of the other games. Yes. There's there's 10 players that are going to play college basketball on these teams. Yeah. Which Sorry. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Rock Creek alone has three kids right now. Ladarius Wallace, the tree kid, is a monster in the paint. I think he's the most underrated player in the sectional. I and then Mario. Pick. I like that pick. His body, when he uses his body and plays down low, I think outside of a double team or flopping on a charge, I don't think, I don't know if you can stop him at that level. No, you can't. He's too big. He's just too big, and he's skilled. All right, boys, this time, who you pick in for your 2023 Sectional 61 champs? And if you don't know, it's um, West Wash Borden playing in Rock Creek Christian Academy, and the buys were South Central and Lanesville. So... The winner of game one would play South Central. Game winner of game two plays Lanesville. So two of the top, the all four teams got separated on both sides. I'm going to go South Central or Christian Academy. If that uh, is that could be the championship game. And the reason why is although I, and, and I'm a huge Doc Nash fan in terms of coaching, and I know Borden um, has all the pieces. I just think playing at West Wash is going to be tough. I think yeah. that um, if had this section have been at Borden, I would pick Borden. But I think that. Uh, I'm going to go with South Central Christian Academy. I think it's their time. I think both of these teams, Christian Academy, some people even thought that Joshua Renfro would be this lone wolf who was going to do it by himself. Cooks emerged as a player. They've gotten other players that have stepped up. I think they have enough scoring, enough players that can get it done. But I also think South Central is, uh, you can't sleep on them. I think they're obviously the favorite, but I think that uh, them or Christian Academy is going to come away with the title. Yeah, I'm taking CAA over Rock Creek, and I know I'm biased, but I just think I just think that Renfro has been playing too well here as of late. I know you're biased, obviously, but at the same time, the kid's phenomenal. And Roy's come back with a vengeance and ever since he was injured. And he's, I think, sixth or seventh in the state in rebounds, and that's been a big missing piece for CAI. So um, I, I think CAI gets the finals against probably, it's probably Borden, but I'm actually going to take South Central. I think South Central's guard front is going to be a little bit too much for them. Um, Coach Casey, I think, gets to his third straight sectional championship game, and I, I, I'm going to take CAI. There you have it. We appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this is an every year thing. Hopefully we're doing this. Hopefully there's enough teams, 1 through 4A, that we do this, you know, next week for the regional game. And that is something different this year is the regional game, the regional is a game. game. So 
I and we were talking about this earlier. Whoever gets out of this one A sectional, I think they're going to semi state because the regional draw was the new wash sectional. Um, mm-hmm. So that's like Rising Sun, what a new wash and um, Crothersville is in that. So whoever gets out of this has a great possibility. Whoever gets out of the two A, I think is the state champ. Where will the regional be? It's at Lagodi. Mm-hmm. So you it it could be Rock Creek South Central Board and Christian Academy at Lagodi playing New Wash. And all four of those teams, well, all three of those teams beat New Wash in the regular season. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun one. Um, I'll be at the West Wash the whole time. You'll be at West Wash. You'll probably bounce around some. Um, make it out to a sectional game. Please, when we post this content, please share it. And again, it's Bryant Northern, Alex Hayes. Appreciate you guys watching. See you.